This is something which is obligatory for any leader. It is an inseparable part of any modern person, of any individual. And this is something, uh, th this is the gap between digital literacy and digital illiteracy. Uh, and the gap is much bigger than it was in the past when we were talking about just literacy and literacy. It's about everything. It's about planning your time, communication, advertising channels, advertising campaigns, etc. And those people who have these skills really a thousand times more productive in comparison with those who cannot use it. So one of the pieces of advice I would like to give is just a test for deep uh, digital literacy. These are those truths which will not be given to you in any university. This is the knowledge of real time. And actually, this is something that didn't exist just one year ago. So now we talk about, uh, we talk a lot about blockchain, cryptocurrency, which uh, are on the one hand, means giant opportunities, but as a science, we consolidated for about one year. So you won't be able to find this information in different blogs. And if you want to study it, you either do it yourself or you are, commun you are communicating with people who have this knowledge. So if a leader doesn't have this digital literacy, uh, he or she can hardly be called a leader because it directly influences one's productivity. And you understand that the leader should lead people behind himself or herself. And another example uh, is about personal skills. We come back to the point that a person is a combination of different personal or human peculiarities. So people shake hands, not the products, not businesses, but people. And we do not feel that chemistry between people, if we do not have personal emotions, probably you are not going to uh, lead your business. And uh, probably people underestimate sometime, sometimes these points. It's very important to understand what is it about people. People are rational, yes, but still people are even more emotional than rational, and sometimes they base their decisions on their emotions. And understanding of these human skills, human pers uh, individual traits, is another point that a good leader should have. Because by definition, a leader is the person who does not achieve a certain goal himself or herself, but makes other people uh, achieve the same goal. So we talk about a balance. Uh, humanity, personal skills, emotional program is experimental program and we try to include such courses as digital lab. This course is not only about to give something to teach our, uh, our clients uh, some uh, language of uh, computer languages or new technologies, but to give them certain approaches uh, how to listen to your client, how to hear your client. And for instance, certain services developed within the framework of that course should appear not out of the blue, but should be aimed at specific uh, sensitive topics, specific requests of the clients. We give the tools that allow them to commercialize the tools and services developed by the participants. So we are talking about mini accelerators, so to say, within the framework of MBA program. And that's a new approach. Those are the new, that's the new demand that the market is sending out, and we're trying to penetrate it uh, through our programs. With regards to the cycle of programs, now it's uh, short in 25 to 35 percent of each program, even the most fully successful one has got to be renewed and uh, has got to be introduced new stuff into regularly. Thank you very much, Valeria, and it's a great pleasure of mine. I'd like to introduce you to yet another speaker of ours, Andrei Gulag. Andrei Bulag is a managing partner of Deloitte in Ukraine. Andrei was head of uh, the auditor in, uh, of uh, in, uh, transnational local companies, and he was also helped launching companies onto the IPO, and currently he is a leader of the group of the innovation on the CIS level. Andrew, I would like to ask you the following question. In one of the interviews, I, I read, I've read that uh, you are inspired with the, by the leaders who set high-level objectives, who know how to 
join their efforts and be on the same page. But the most important is to share the result of what they've done. What corporate culture would you recommend or what elements of corporate culture would you recommend to build up for the leaders who are currently in our audience? Thank you very much, Jana. You know that uh, I, uh, last year I, I, uh, I, I said that there's like a, a definite crisis of capitalism. This is what I said. That's the word combination and the concept that all the business is based upon the optimization of the cost for the shareholder is a little bit outdated, so it has got to be modified. And uh, the search for a uh, higher objective for the business from my perspective and from the point of view of some other companies, let us not only uh, merge and uh, consolidate the co group of people working on that and thus achieving better results. We also have to say that uh, the evolution of the consciousness of the P person, company and organization, th this process is a like process and I'm all for the spiral dynamics. Uh, uh, I say that the consciousness does, uh, does change as the evolution goes by and there are certain stages. You cannot skip or jump over some of those stages and the question what can be recommended for each and every person for each and every company everything will depend where the person of the company is currently at we have a lot of there's a lot of businesses in ukraine that has gone through have gone through the so-called the red level either i win or i'm being uh, uh, beaten fought down so the next stage would be the shaping of the business processes rules or judicial system for and then or rather higher ideas come into play and every business and every person has that to go through that evolution of consciousness um, for our business for Deloitte Ukraine we we started with uh, and I personally think that uh, engaging people into something more than uh, a particular sum of dollars in uh, in the, the budget of income or in the does allow engaging people truly engaging people and speaking about the emotional engagement that Ilya has been talking about, this is something that you cannot do without. You've got to engage the people. So when a person gets up in the morning and he or she goes to work to earn money uh, for the shareholder, I would say this is quite a complicated concept to accomplish. So uh, I'm all for, I'm an adept of higher purpose and I'm an adept of, uh, of a higher purpose once again that you can uh, get and consolidate people in the corporate culture that's built upon this type of value uh, enables us to consolidate the group of people that our team to get higher purpose and higher results thank you very much andrew it's a great pleasure i'd like to introduce you to yaroslav Ajnuk. those who attended yesterday's first plenary session saw on the screen the fact that ukraine uh, that Ukraine is proud of PetCube. Uh, this is a startup founded by a Ukrainian. Yaroslav is the founder of the this, this startup. Of this startup, Yaroslav, the co-founder of PetCube, the company that produces that that produces gadgets for pets. His company is located in the Silicon Valley, and one of the branches is in Kiev. Yaroslav, I would like to ask you the following. A couple years ago when you had that crazy idea uh, to, s to create gadgets for pets, now you are entering entertainment uh, business for pets, pet entertainment business. How did you have that crazy idea and who, who risked investing in uh, the initial capital into this idea and uh, do you think that a leader should be a science fiction writer. Thank you very much, Jana. Thank you. Play with cats and dogs. Two hundred euros, dollars, euros for real. Two hundred dollars per piece. When we were starting six years ago, that was the idea. So one of our initial investors was was a Russian living in Boston, Massachusetts, Simon Boston, who is famous for. You know, when he was attending MIT and he, he developed the technique uh, that a group of people can win at the casino playing blackjack, I think it was a game of a kind. And uh, there's even a movie made about him uh, called 21. And we met Simeon at a cafe in Kiev and just uh, 20 minutes after we've, we had met. 
we started talking he said wow nice idea i would like to invest in you and uh so your most re your, your last question has been whether a leader should be science fiction writer or like uh i think that they uh, in the world uh, there is a lot of capital there's no lack of capital no matter what you hear what you're told what is lacking is the ambition are the ambitions and uh, big ideas are lacking and uh, the the largest competition is the competition uh, is the run for the talents you can need to compete for the talent the only way that you can uh, win over the talents and is to clearly articulate the idea the mission of the company that the people would uh, have uh, that the people uh, would join you for the people to join you why google space face are successful they say let's organize all the world's information let's go to mars and the people who from their childhood have been if, if you tell a geek let's organize all the info in the world that's the coolest thing you can do in the world so until i retire i want to be working for this company if you tell a person who's been dreaming of uh, traveling to mars i'm building up a company that will build up a rocket that will transport us all the way to the mars those people would like to join to work uh, in that company and those who cannot will be assisting uh, so that the mission of the company become reality and so that people travel to the mars for example so this is the vision i guess is very important thank you very much yaroslav and uh, now we go over to another question this question is about the vision your vision again uh, uh, in the in 1950s uh, IBM president said all the world market of is not more than five uh, computers and digital equipment Car corporation said that he doesn't see a reason why people would like one day be using computers at home to have PCs later so those words became the worst forecasts of the 20th century so and I would like to ask you the following now from your point of view what what is your forecast what are the words that uh, that are said today will make it into the list of the worst quotation of the 21st century who would like to be the first one I'm going to blow up uh, I want to say something I, for all my life I've been told that everything you say will never happen you see the world from wrong perspective with wrong eyes uh, uh, that's a well uh, everything that I do today I, I, I'm told forget about it you'll never be successful the worst forecast that I'm hearing that I've heard time and again from different people and this is when I say things have changed things will change things will never be the same uh, and I'm told what the hell are you talking about nothing will ever change things will be just like it's always been look around hundred years the same people committing the same thing doing the same things no changes are coming so this is the moment when it's it's not things that simply changing everything is has already changed there's no that old world present anymore so if you've come up with something and somebody tells you don't do this it's impossible because things be, will be just like it's always been this is not true this is the worst forecast that you can think of thank you very much anybody else would like to say anything with regards to the worst forecast well it, um, I would say like the, the, this is the banal forecast but we've been talking about it a lot that robots will substitute people and uh, in, uh, occupying everything all the positions all the posts it's clear that uh, some unique features of human being like creativeness spontaneous spontaneity being ability to forecast and take uh, new solutions non-standard solutions and be innovators and and uh, be an author of technological breakthrough in a year time five years time this is something you cannot put into algorithm robots will never be able to substitute human brain human beings and uh, this is what uh, Ilya has been talking about a leadership leadership quality skills like being able to manage people being able to inspire people this is something that robots will never be able to do robot will be an assistant and a de and uh, different hierarchical levels but i would say that robert will substitute a human being well i think this is the one of the worst forecasts that w that the, the robot will substitute the human being Ilya, i um, uh, would like to Oh, speak about the set of pessimistic points of view that technocrat 
that uh, type of governance is evil, that everybody becomes uh, evil and the, the robots will substitute people. That's the technocratic end of the world. And so that's the rage of the machines. Yeah, one of the, but uh, that's like a global thesis. Yeah, well, one of them being the rage of the machine. One of the more deeper thesis based on the positions that the probability of human error is a constant. So I didn't understand, you didn't understand, but the, the, the price you have to pay grows geometrical. So a couple thousand years ago, you burned down a village if you set up the wrong fire. Now we're talking about the nuclear power plant. And uh, if we take a look at the that the physicists in Lucerne play with black holes and I've heard that what if they create a black hole those physicists and uh, the humankind will never understand what has happened I mean everything will just disappear we as humans will disappear so and this is this is the core thesis period it's evident that this leads to the end of the world as we know it and but from my experience I I see that if you've reached the level that you commit errors of this scale then uh, what the hell is going on and the tools to avert it are uh, various and numerous so i'm a technocratic optimist and it's not only i think that this technocratic end of the world will never happen i think that uh, in the short-term perspective uh, i think that technologies are always evil killing uh, jobs killing uh, ability the people to survive but uh, quite often people forget that in the short term perspective technologies is discomfort and pain because it is hard to be changed and not comfortable to be changing you like what you or you usually have but if you change, you go to the high level. Therefore, I would like to differentiate between a temporary discomfort and general evil. And I do hope that a person will be able to understand how to use this temporary discomfort for the good, for his or her own benefit. Thank you. The question was, uh, what statement could be the most absurd statements in this world? Probably what is topical of it about me is the expression that Ukraine is a failed state. Uh, I think it is totally absurd. It will be just dispelled. It will be uh, proved that it is absurd in the nearest future, and by the way, by the people who are here. And I hope that Ukraine uh, has a unique position globally. Currently, Ukraine is one of the most uh, interesting countries all over the world in order to establish global, highly technological companies. Why? Because here in Ukraine, there are several components which are the ingredients of success in this field. A lot has already been said about the fact that we have very good, highly qualified engineering school, and engineering school not only in terms of software, but in many other fields. Ukraine probably is in top 10 countries that can fully produce a plane. What a plane means, means lots of knowledge and expertise in different fields, starting with materials, radio technologies, computer technologies, etc. So it means we have highly qualified experts. Also, the cost of Ukrainian qualified labor force is one of the lowest all over the world. And these two factors allow us to uh, do uh, five or ten plans for the same amount of money uh, which you will need to use to, to buy to construct just two plans in America. And these two things are combined with another important factor. This is passionarity, let's say. Uh, we didn't have the statehood in Ukraine for more than 30 years. And when we acquired this idea of statehood, of the uh, idea of the Ukrainian state, we are trying to prove what we uh, are worth of. And we see it from three re revolutions that happened all over these 30 years. And if we take into account the background, the uh, knowledge we have, if we reject these 70 years of communism, we see what kind of progress we have made for these 30 years. So we have great experts 
we have one of the cheapest places where you can produce intellectual products. And if we take into account the fact that these people are passionate about what they do, I am convinced that this will make Ukraine one of the best places all over the world in order to create global, highly technological companies. And this is something we are going to witness in the nearest uh, 10 or 20 years. For, as for me, the goal of Ukraine should be to create, to become a role model that will be followed later by other countries. And this is something that we should take efforts to. Undoubtedly, if we uh, take the expressions, statements offered by the colleagues, I liked the uh, statement mentioned by Yaroslav that Ukraine is a failed state, and we have to prove that this statement is absurd. Uh, I would like also to add to what Valeria has said that uh, the robots will never become uh, as effective, as efficient as people. I would like to say that emotionally people will never be able to uh, meet people. Probably in 60 or 50 or 70 years we'll be able to come back to that point. Our brain is something we still do not know a lot about. And the more scientists try to study it, the more we have the point that I know that I don't know. And something that I don't know actually prevails. So it, it means, uh, it seems to me it's true about our brain. So probably I would specify the point about emotions of robots. There are two aspects. I would like not to witness, and lots of people still say that they might happen. One of them is related to uh, to the environment we live in, and the second one is about people. So lots of people talk about environmental disasters, predict environmental disasters, and uh, the fact that uh, now we live in consumer society, uh, actually, according to some experts, leads to some uh, environmental things and the changing uh, changes in the world our uh, children will live in. So let's try to avoid these pessimistic predictions. And the second point about is about the robots. Probably there will be automatization. There will be automatization or robotization, and uh, definitely they will be part of our life. But the point is, if we are just have some time free, what we are going to do as humans with this free time? So we are all humans, and probably we try, we already uh, forget what it means to enjoy this life. So when we are going to have this free time due to robotization or automatization, I actually want us to spend this time in a useful and efficient way, and let's hope we'll be able to avoid uh, spending this time on wars and on something negative. So these two negative predictions are something I would like to uh, not to witness and I would like us to avoid. Thank you, Andrei. And now I would like to address our audience and now we are going to vote. So I kindly ask our technical assistant to uh, put uh, on this slide the uh, voting form. The questionnaire, you can read these uh, uh, statements or issues. Now we are going to discuss it with our speakers, and later we uh, you can vote. Now uh, the question is to our panelists. Uh, we are talking about leaders on the level of corporations, but also there are leaders of society and leaders of the states. Now in China there is a program, a system of social rating of people, citizens of China. The index of reliability, so to say, according to which they try to measure different behavioral aspects of every person. The question is to our speakers. What do you think about this social rating? And what kind of consequences are such rating system of reliability or, or just efficiency of people that might happen? 
The first idea is that actually it's not an experiment, it's actually a program that will be fully implemented till 2020. And it means the whole country has lots of uh, surveillance cameras. This is like Big Brother is watching you. And on the basis of behavioral behavior of people, a person will be either marked uh, positively or negatively marked. And uh, in case or he will be positive, he will have some benefits. And the same, there will be some disadvantages in case of our negative marking. It's uh, like we come back to Orwell's uh, story in 1984. And in my opinion, this experiment uh, should fail, because in this case, we talk about the whole nation that will try to behave or uh, to, to be obedient, to behave in a good way, and it will probably kill those rules who do not, uh, where we have people who do not play the rules of the game and who try to introduce something new, and these are those people who actually do something new. Um, if we uh, remember Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, or Sergey Brin, if we take a look at their biographies, they were not always that obedient and they were not always compatible with the system. Uh, well, is this light on all the time? No, the audience is working on voting, and you have to answer the question. Uh, it's very s actually sad that they have this experiment. Uh, people who actually drive cars in Ukraine, they do not uh, what they d actually do not uh, like those who didn't pay the customs duty for their car. And uh, for instance, if I am a person who pays taxes in this state, I would like to, my child to go to a good school, and those who do not pay taxes probably should not have this chance. So it depends what angle we take, uh, what kind of approach we take to this rating. I'm a person who has been working in Germany for a long time, and it's really great happiness when the legislation is stable and when the legislation is good. It doesn't matter what kind of taxes are if all people are equal and if all people pay these taxes. So actually, I do not believe in punishments. I believe they are not efficient. But what I believe in is encouragement. And if people, according to this social rating, are good, I would probably really provide them with uh, some benefits and positive things. Non-visa regime only for reliable and trustworthy people. There should be certain things that should not belong to people who are not adequate in terms of their social behavior. I would probably... Uh, not be afraid of control. So if I am adequate, if I am fine, if I am trustworthy and reliable, I am not afraid of control. I do not, I'm against the idea that innovation is against our trustworthiness and integrity and reliability. If I uh, can think, it means that I should not think about how to deceive the system. If I'm a genius, Probably I can come up with some uh, new ideas, and I'll be reliable, I'll be environmentally friendly, etc. It seems to me it's not only about it, but there should be some discipline in terms of social behavior, and this following the rules should be encouraged. Well, it's actually not about integrity and trustworthiness and loyalty and reliability. It's what I was wanted to say is just the system will be able to operate big data and to produce predictive analysis. So the person actually may not commit anything bad, but by analyzing his or her behavior, a person, a system will probably predict that he or she is inclined or prone to some antisocial behavior. If I could choose the place where I could live in, I would probably uh, use the data uh, of such system and probably I would choose the 
place where people behave in a different way. It has both advantages and disadvantages. It has its pros and cons. Probably what we are afraid are or are afraid of is the unknown. Thank you very much. A very interesting question. And I'm just thinking that if uh, the if I were not sitting here, but there was a robot, probably the robot would not have that feeling that I disagree with the previous speaker. But I do have this feeling right now because I'm a human and I would like to share this feeling with you. The first question is, who are the judges? And the another point is, we all come from childhood and we have our children. And do you remember that feeling when you are constantly judged, evaluated, estimated? And these estimations and evaluations are very painful in terms of our emotional feelings. You can be fully um, reliable and trustworthy and good, and you can follow all the rules. But for instance, we have our panel, we are good. And then after this panel, I go out of the room and give my rating to you and you and to you all sitting here but actually this is this is happens I, I talk about our emotional condition our ability to be happy to realize ourselves our dreams our goals not to be afraid of mistakes not to be afraid of experiments and innovations not to be afraid of the of mistakes. Those companies who do not believe in punishments but believe in pu encouragements actually are the companies that produce innovations. Evaluations and judgments and estimations is something really complicated and challenging, I would say. And it seems to me in future we are going to face lots of ethical dilemmas, ethical challenges. And coming back to my probably pessimistic or apocalyptic like prognosis predic predictions there probably might be something we are not ready for my personal freedom versus transparency who will be controlling me who will be manipulating me just great question we see different opinions we see how the audience is responding to it but for me to be judged all the time to be evaluated all the time might be destructive in order to live a happy life and still, I would like to have some time for questions from our audience. Therefore, I kindly ask Yaroslav and Delia to comment in a very laconic way, probably just one minute each. Thank you very much. Two aspects. Who are the judges? Who sets this system of values that is implemented according to which people are being programmed? I would say that the system of value is very deep and it's going beyond any formal and informal walls and their boundaries. And when you assess that, if you run in a uh, violet in the street, uh, street running on the right light of the street light, probably you're saving somebody's life. So this is too early to say to say if a red light or a street light is something negative this is beyond the human being's capacity to know and uh, to do the type of assessing that you have to apply the question is who has set up the system of assessment uh, was it a reflection of a lot of people or was it just a reflection of somebody's manipulation know that this is an easy way to manipulate the country of the millions of people number two there's no correct system of values the humankind is strong because everyone's got his or her own vision of values some people think that being open is good some people think this being open is bad so I have claws somebody's got wings somebody's got legs but altogether this makes us strong this is just like you play chess you have different figures but uh, those figures make one so one system is not capable to exist it makes things average everything average and thus the system becomes less stronger than when you have different social system coexist and basic agreements yep so that i'm not trying to invade your territory you don't invade mine this is important but where is the balance in between these two systems and where is the limits of the liberty and different types of values so this is something that we have to 
developed and invent and the existing declaring system of values and morals cannot coexist with the modern technologies. A couple years ago I was shocked, stunned with the data that in the US quarter of the divorces is the reason is because of the Facebook. So the level of the openness that the technology brings in now what is in Vegas no longer stays in Vegas but is on the YouTube. So now we've reached the point when the morals, the addicts, the laws based well, they were used to be on the privacy and they were not meant for this type of openness there's a so there was a movie i say what i think featuring starting gibson or carrie and uh, imagine that now what i think is what i say and now we see that the society is crumbling down but i think that the society has got to align this system of uh, values to the level of the openness that the technology brings so it's too early to run those types of tests because this is going to be a failure i hope that uh, the technologies will not be controlling and programming people turning a human being into a robot thank you very much yeah Thank you very much, and uh, this is quite an interesting issue, and uh, look, in the world there's a standoff between different technologies, it used to be the Soviet Union versus the East, Western world, now it's the Western world against the People's Republic of China, and capitalism as the capitalist form has won, and we see uh, the end of this history and uh, we see speaking about uh, the politics and everything uh, the, the danger is that china the people's republic of china which is a lot faster economically developed and will also pull the political blanket on himself and more countries will follow in the footsteps of china which is uh, not the, as democratic as the western countries are are and the the problem is the political innovation in China taken faster than the political innovations in Western democracies. The Western democracies are not capable of offering the progress of their democratic models. Meanwhile, the People's Republic of China is offering horrible, terrible innovations in the system of total control. And Orwell, in his 1984 books, he's turning upside down in his grave, as we say. And there's a, there's a quote that AI is the technology, artificial intelligence is a technology of, is a capitalist-communist technology and authoritarian technology. Meanwhile, blockchain is a technology of democracy. Because uh, artificial intelligence is about centralization, about possessing more data, about the, you know being the big brother, creating the, the one and same algorithm for everyone. And blockchain is about everybody's having his or her own small truth. This is a, a cool thing that we have to think about. I think it's so much important to offer alternatives to these models in order to avoid uh, this uh, model beating every other model. And uh, the alternative would be the society in which every human being's got his or her own small truth, where the laws, if, if uh, the 51% of people vote for the law, this does not mean that this law is compulsory and will be used against those 49 people who are against that law. And um, there are certain theories of visions how to create a society in which these rules and they are used only for a certain group of people within a the framework of one and the same society and uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not a, a, an adept of the, the point of view that there's an adequate behavior that the human being should stick to and according to this behavior one people should be rewarded and other people should be punished this is a road to nowhere this is a road to annihilate in any innovation this is the uh, road to fascism and this is a quite dangerous point of view somebody thinks that he or she being part of a group of people is capable of setting rules for the rest of the society and uh, people 
are not small nucleus nuclei you cannot test them uh, you, just like we do with nucleus and atom and in physics and uh, we need the innovation in the field of social policy Yaroslav and I mean wrapping up but uh, in order to do that uh, we need to use people who would like to participate in that set up small floating states city states who are willing to participate in this experiment when the Chinese government uh, takes a group of people and does it this is horrible this is wrong and the world should be against it Yaroslav thank you very much the outcome of this uh, of our vote is on the screen what we asked the speakers was more about their attitude what's your attitude what is the outcome and uh, well, meanwhile you've been voting if it's uh, inevitable and the audience has said that the rate in practice will get out of the territory of the people's republic of china so and uh, if china launches this uh, experiment and we know this is one billion 300 million of people most likely this will go beyond the borders of the people's republic of china that is the result of the vote and now i'd like to turn to the audience we have uh, very little time so please ask your questions and uh, and address the speaker that you address and tell the speaker to address the question and please do not exceed one minute's time this is this is what i'm asking of the speakers not to exceed one minute's time when answering your uh, the questions that you've been addressed. Morning, Europe Label Pill Consulting. Uh, I j just like to say, I'm um, speaking about the assessment. Uh, it's amazing. It shouldn't be because it's taking place right here, right now. You're being assessed by a client with their money. You, with credit ratings, assess your clients. Uh, Uber, you. You assess the drivers, drivers assess you, so I even I'm stunned that you're doubting this. To all of you, what are you going to do to become a new leader in the digital world? What are you going to do the new way? A new, what are you going to do a new to be the new leader in the digital world? Let's choose the person you'd like to address your question, please. Olga, it goes to you. Uh, three, three years ago, I launched a startup which is currently active in four countries. That's online service. That's a check-in for different types of services. We started with the yes, uh, car uh, repair shop uh, check-in. I work with medical institutions and uh, barber shops and hairstylists. And I think in two years' time, you will no longer need to call somebody it will be obsolete uh, there's a big resistance that resistance that we run to on the market because nobody wants to change anything but I think that the only way to be the leader in the digital world is to be truly persistent crazy and uh, the never never be stopping so this is the locomotive that no one you should be the locomotive that, that no one will be able to stop well that is soccer leadership journey i'm interested in the your points of view but i would like to address it only to two people olga and Ilya. only one person please choose one person all righty Ilya. olga and we'll talk about it uh, with you later I think that you agree that one of the most important uh, skills of a leader is uh, a capability, is ability uh, to choose some the one the communication, the most important communication, that ocean of the communications, retain the attention and take that to the very end. So, what is the principle that you use when you choose on 20% of the actions? of 20 percent what you do that eventually leads to 80 percent of your success nice question i've told you it's a lot more difficult to understand and to reconciliate with things you don't have to do you don't do with things that you want to do because you want to do everything the more you do the more opportunities you see the more you want to do now uh, choose a selection is never personal so you cannot measure your so you can never go for maturity or anything, you know, every person is a set of vectors, is a value, set of values, and using that multi-vector value system, you assess all the opportunities. At a certain point, it becomes your habit. 
and going back to the ratings you get this amount of points because of financial investment that you do and uh, you sort of filter it out filter it out and this is quite inconvenient to cut down opportunities this is like cutting out cutting off your limb because intuitively you want everything but you need to cut something and you need to understand that you do it because of this and that and you have to explain it you know it's not because you know everybody's running i'm running as well so and you need to have the special uh, habit and you have to bring it up you need to have that feel thank you very much so dear organizers can you talk into the microphone dear participants dear organizers of the forum i'm an engineer and I graduated from Kyiv Polytechnic Institute, and I work at the Ukrainian National <laughs> for the Ukrainian National Academy, and I'm author of 100 uh, patents in 30 different fields, uh, and uh, there's not an invention of mine that has been taken into the industry. I have patents for 15 new uh, electric, uh, just producing plants. We're not talking about renewable or types of energy. I'm talking about totally new principles of electricity production, but. Please find me a, a governmental boss of any level who likes it, who will, who needs it. So I think that I'm here. We need to set up a forum to invite all the ministers. Imagine how many, the number of patents I have. President Kravchuk and some other presidents and journalists have spoken to all of them. No one needs uh, intellectual property. We understand that this is a command. Ukrainian patent agency don't care. So thank you very much once again. And I would like to applause to our scientist who has created that many patents and created created a lot of stuff. And still we have to finish our panel in our to time i would like to thank our speakers for this discussion i would like to express our gratitude to the audience the conclusion i come to is that there are certain things which uh, are not about machines this is the poor support trust empathy and ability to take uh, important decisions taking into account the capacity and the flow of technical progress thank you very much for participation and i wish you a good day